Hey guys, it's Ben with Design3 here. I'm talking to Rod Humble, who's currently CEO at Linden Lab and the creator there, the creators of Second Life. Thanks for talking to us, Rod. You're welcome. Uh, so, what were the, some of the first video games you played when you were young, and what are some of your favorite all-time games? Uh, there was a lot. Uh, in England, we had the Sinclair Spectrum, so that was a uh, it, it was a, a, a very small, uh, inexpensive computer, um, and the ZX80 before then. And actually, you were um, you would type in games, so, so the first one of the earliest games I got was uh, racing games, mm -hmm. and literally a magazine would come with 40 lines of code and you have to type it in and <laughs> hit run. Um, so those were the first dogfighting games and um, racing games. Uh, then I moved up to the Atari 800 and uh, one of the first games I played there was Eastern Front, uh, which was Crawford's game, uh, which meant a lot to me. Um, the uh, other games at the time were Alternate Reality. It was this wonderful game where you'd been abducted from Earth and you were dumped in this fantasy world, and you just got to wander around. And the, um, the thing that was great about it, obviously it was a precursor to a lot of 3D uh, role-playing games. The thing that was great about it was it was incredibly hard, and you had permadeath. So you'd be walking down the street and some guy would just kind of stab you in the face, and that was a game over. <laughs> uh, and you had to have food and water. So you starved to death. So you, had, you started with nothing and you had to go and try and get a job or try and you know, get some kind of money to get food. Uh, it was amazing, amazing. And how did you get started in uh, video game development? Um, I've, uh, I've always designed games. Um, since I was six, I've designed board games and then war games and then D&D. &D. And um, then I got my first computer at, I think, 13 or 12, and I just started programming games, and um, I, I don't know anything else. So. so you started at a young age. How did you kind of you know, learn the skills and kind of build them up, the skills to become a game developer? Um, that's a good question. I have no idea how. <laughs> I, I just wanted to make games. Okay. I mean, it was just this obvious thing of there is a computer. You have to make games with it. Right. What else is it good for? Right. Yeah. <laughs> there can't be any other use other than games for this thing, so let's make games with it. I mean, that was just, just it. And how did you go about kind of designing and planning a new video game? Um, well, it depends. So, uh, you know, in my day job when I'm making commercial games, then we do a lot of uh, planning and focus group testing um, to make sure it's the right game. With my personal games, um, I tend to, in the same manner I talk, I tend to fly around a lot and just try and latch onto bits and eventually, okay, that feels okay, and then, um, then start developing. So before going to Linden Lab, you were, worked at EA and you were in charge of The Sims, which is a hugely popular and successful game. So what was it like being responsible you know, for that game series with you know, how important it is to so many people? Um, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Actually, it was it was a really good time. I mean, it, it's a wonderful community, and uh, it's such a wonderful game. And um, I mean, who who wouldn't want to be able to take World Wright's baby and play around with it for right. a few years? You know, it's great. Let's see if I can mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so, of course, now you're working on Second Life, yeah. and that is an expansive online world, you know, with a huge amount of players. Um, Kind of, can you t t um, tell us your thoughts about video games becoming areas of social interaction? Yeah, I think that. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I, I think I think what attracted me to Second Life is it was so unique. Is this the world is entirely made by the players? The economy is entirely driven by the players. <coughs> and um, and boy, they they're committed. They uh, they care an awful lot about that, and rightfully so. And I think that. Um, to me, it was this logical progression of the more and more that we can devolve power to the actual players rather than the creators, I think the healthier it is. Mm -hmm. And Second Life was right there already, and I, I worked at it and thought, hey, there's a whole bunch of stuff we can do that can make this thing. Right, right. Uh, so there's been a bunch of debate about whether or not video games can be considered <laughs> art. Yes. And what are your thoughts on that matter? I, it, I, I think it's over. I think that, you know, I don't, I don't know if, um, uh, I mean, obviously not all video games are intended to be art, a lot of them intend to be entertainment, but I've made games that 
I created as high art. People, other people have made games that have been created as high art. They've been enjoyed by thousands of people as high art. They've been treated by art critics as high art and displayed in art galleries. So, I mean, yeah, how much art do you want, right? And, and uh, if there's folks out there who are, well, video games aren't art, at this point, you're in the time machine business. You know, invent a time machine and go on and do all of, all of the ones that are out there. You know, you can say, hey, I don't like them, that's fine. But then you also have to say, well, and the thousands of people who do regard them as high art, they're deranged. <laughs> and by the way, you know, the critics who treat them as high art, they're crazy. Uh, at a certain point, you're sort of running out of options. Right. It's, uh, it's time machine time. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I think it's kind of over. Okay. So what advice would you give to somebody who's new to game development and they want to get started making and designing their own video games? Uh, I would say if you're not a programmer, then uh, start with uh, board games and um, you know, even miniature board games rules, there's a vibrant community there. Um, you can make a game this weekend that way. Mm -hmm. It's not, not hard, it's a learned skill. And all of those, uh, those things that you do in board games will be applicable later on. Um, if you want to go into the games industry later and you're not a programmer, then again, those skills will be helpful. Um, if you want to make computer games yourself, then you know, Look, pick up a authoring tool. You don't have to learn C++ to make a game anymore. There's tools out there like Game Maker, Multimedia Fusion. Uh, there's uh, Dark Basic. I mean, all of these are very, very easy to use uh, tools. Um, and then you're off to the races. Um, and I would encourage everyone who likes games, who thinks it's interesting, to do it. Because my hope is that there'll be a bunch of new ideas. My one request is that when folks make their new games is just don't copy someone else's and just rescan. Right. Yeah. We've got that covered. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've already done that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that brings me to my final question and could be the hardest one yet. Uh, if you had to sum up video game design in just one word, what would that one word be? Glorious. <laughs> Alright, Rob, thanks a lot. We appreciate it very much. Thank you.